Welcome to our lecture online. So, and so far we saw an overdamped case, a critically damped case, so now we probably should see an underdamped case, and to do that, we lowered the resistance some more down to 1 ohm. We kept the same circuit as before. Now, this resistor has gone down to 1 ohm, and we're supposed to find the voltage as a function of time and the current as a function of time. The voltage across the capacitor and the current through the inductor. Notice that it's a series circuit once the switch is open, and so we're looking for the step response at t equals zero when the switch opens up for a series r cell circuit. It's a good idea to find all these values first, and of course, since we're now probably dealing with an underdamped case, we're going to need the frequency of oscillation in the circuit for, a, for this particular damped case. All right, the alpha is equal to r over 2L, and so in this case, that's the resistance, which is 1, divided by the inductance, twice the inductance, 2 times 1, which is equal to 1 half. And the natural frequency of the circuit, that of course is the frequency without a resistor, is going to be 1 over the square root of LC, which is equal to 1 over the square root of L, which is 1, C, which is a quarter, and that would be a 1 quarter, 1 half, that becomes equal to 2, and you can see in this case, that alpha is smaller than the natural frequency, and therefore we can indeed conclude that it's an underdamped case. All right, if it's underdamped, then we need this general equation. The voltage as a function of time is equal to A1 times the cosine of the damped frequency times T plus A2 times the sine of the damped frequency times t, all multiplied times e to the minus alpha t. Of course, we have a steady state voltage potentially in this circuit as well, and so we have to include that. So it all comes down to finding alpha, the steady state voltage, A1 and A2, and of course, the damped frequency as well. We already found alpha, that's equal to 1 half, but what about the damped frequency? Well, the damped frequency that is equal to the square root of the natural frequency squared minus alpha squared. So in this case, that's equal to the square root omega squared, that's 2 squared minus alpha squared, which is 1 quarter squared. Is a, Whoa, not 1 quarter. Got ahead of myself. It's 1 half squared, which is a quarter. So 1 half squared, which is a quarter, that's 4 minus uh, a quarter, which is 3 and 3 quarters. So with a calculator, let's find out. 3.75, take the square root of 1.9365. So the damped frequency is equal to 1.9365. 9365, if you want to keep that many decimal places. And so you see it's slightly less than the natural frequency. Okay, that's because the resistor here is quite small. So now we have the damped frequency, we have alpha, what about the steady state voltage? And what about the initial current and initial voltage? Well, let's see here, the initial current. When we uh, have the switch closed, the circuit has its complete circuit, we have the voltage from the source, we have the total resistance, so we can say that I initial is equal to V over R, so it would be the voltage to the source divided by the total resistance, which is 24 volts divided by 1 ohm plus 1 ohm, which is 2 ohms, and that gives us 12 amps for the initial current to the circuit. All right, what about the initial voltage? The initial voltage across the capacitor. Well, when we have a steady state condition before the switch is opened, we can see that we have current flowing to this part of the circuit, we don't have any current flowing to the capacitor because that will be filled with charge. The voltage across the capacitor will be equal to the voltage across that resistor. That would be half the voltage because we have one ohm here and one ohm there. So we can say that the initial voltage is the voltage of the source times the one ohm of this resistance right here divided by the total resistance of the series circuit, which is one plus one. So it's half the source voltage, which is 12 volts. Okay, what about the steady state voltage? Well, once we open up the circuit, we can then see that we only have current flowing through here, and it'll flow until the capacitor is filled up. Once the capacitor is filled up, 
we have no voltage drop across the resistor, no voltage drop across the inductor because the inductor only drops voltage when there's a change in the current. So that means all the voltage will be dropped across the capacitor, which means that it will be equal to the source voltage. So the steady state voltage is 24 volts. Now we have everything we need to know. It also helps to have a couple of additional equations right here. We have the current is equal to the capacitance times the change in the voltage, Oop, the change in the voltage across the capacitor with respect to time. And we can say that the voltage across the inductor is equal to L times di dt. Those are very handy equations. One of those will probably come in handy because we need to find the voltage as a function of time and the current as a function of time. So let's write everything down that we know so far on this equation. We have V as a function of time is equal to A1 times the cosine of omega sub D, which is right here. So 1.9365T plus A2 uh, times the sine of 1.9365t like this times e to the minus alpha which is 0.5 so minus 0.5t and plus 24 volts for the steady state voltage so now it comes a now what we're trying to do here is we're trying to find the value for a1 and the value for a2 now, since we know the initial voltage to be equal to 12, what we could do is use the initial conditions here. We say V, when time is equal to 0, is equal to 12 volts, which is equal to. Now, when T is equal to 0, this portion goes to 0 because the sine of 0 is 0. And this goes to 1, so we have A1 times E to the 0, which is also 1, plus 24. So now we subtract 24 from both sides, so we see that A1 is equal to 12 minus 24, which is equal to minus 12. So now we have the value for A1. We still need the value for A2. To do that, we're going to take this into account, where the initial current is equal to C times the initial condition of the change in the voltage with respect to time. So we take the derivative of this, and then use this equation right here, we can actually solve for a2. So the VDT is equal to okay we have a product here we have this times this so we have to use the product rule so we take the first we already know what a1 is a1 is minus 12 so we take minus 12 times the cosine of 1.9365t plus a2 which is what we're looking for times the sine of 1.9365t times the derivative of this, which is minus 0.5 times e to the minus 0.5t. Notice, of course, the derivative of 24 goes to 0. So at this point, I have the first times the derivative of the second plus the second plus the second, which is e to the minus 0.5t multiplied times the derivative of this. So the derivative of this, the cosine is the negative sine, of course, times the derivative of the angle. So that means I have a minus 12 for A1. But when I take the derivative, I get the negative sine. That comes plus 12 times 1.9365. So 12 times 1.9365 equals 23.238. So I end up with 23.238 times the sine of 1.9365t plus the derivative of the sine, which is the cosine. We have a t that we're looking for, so a2, so we have plus a2 times this, so it's 1.9365 times a2 times the cosine of 1.9365t. All right. So you have the first times the derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first. Now we're ready to take the boundary condition when time equals zero. So dv dt, when time is equal to zero, is equal to. So what happens here when t goes to zero? Notice that the sine goes to zero, and the sine here goes to zero. All we have left is the cosine e to the 0 becomes 1, 
So we have point, negative 0 0.5 times this. So that gives me negative 0.5 times this gives me 6 times. So it gives me 6 times the cosine of this, but of course that goes to 0, so that's 1. So it's minus 0 0.5 times the minus 12 is plus, positive 6. This goes to 0. Now over here, this goes to 0, and this goes to 1. So we have 1.93658A2 times this, which goes to 1. So we have plus 1.9365A2. And that equals this, which, by the way, dv dt, where are we? Right here, dv dt, what we can say is that dv dt, when, when time is equal to 0, is equal to i initial divided by the capacitance. I initial, we know, is 12, and the capacitance is 1 quarter, which means that this is equal to 48. So this whole thing here is equal to 48, which means that if we subtract 6 from both sides, we can say that A2 is equal to 48 minus 6, which is 42, divided by 1.9365. And let's calculate that. 42 divided by 1.9365 equals 21.689. 21.689. And so now we found the value for A2. We have the value for A1. Now we can plug everything back into the original equation. So now we can say that the voltage as a function of time is equal to, where are we here? Not a bad idea to put a little star there so we know which equation we're dealing with. A1, which is minus 12, times the cosine of 1.9365 T, plus A2, A2 is a positive 21.689, sine of 1.9365. 5t, the whole thing, multiply times e to the minus alpha t, e to the minus 0.5t, and we have a steady state voltage to 24 that needs to be included. And that here is the equation for the voltage as a function of time, the transient part, and the steady state part. Now, notice, when time becomes very big, e to the minus big, becomes small, eventually zero, the transient part goes to zero, and the remainder will be 24 in the end, and that's the equation for the voltage. Now we still need to find the current. We can go back to this equation right here, where the current is equal to C times dV dt. Now, do I have room for that? Hmm, hmm, hmm. You know what? That's going to be messy, I don't have a lot of room. I think we're going to need part two to calculate that one.